what takes place in a patent infringement trial. The trial begins with jury selection from a group of prospective jurors. Opening statements are presented by the plaintiff, then the defendant. If there is more than one plaintiff or defendant, the judge will ensure they get equal amounts of time. A party's opening statement should lay out what they intend to prove and should be devoid of actual arguments. Next, the plaintiff presents its case, introducing exhibits and calling witnesses and experts in support of its positions. Each opposing party has the opportunity to object to the evidence presented and to cross-examine. After the plaintiff rests its case, the defendant presents its defense by introducing their own exhibits and offering testimony from their witnesses and experts. This part of the trial concludes with the plaintiff calling rebuttal witnesses, who can only rebut testimony from the defendant's witnesses. After all evidence for the case is presented, the plaintiff presents their closing argument and then the defendant presents theirs. The plaintiff is typically allowed to reserve time for rebuttal. Closing arguments give each party the opportunity to highlight what they believe is the critical evidence in their favor and attack the deficiencies in their opponent's case. Lastly, in most patent cases, the jury must deliberate and answer detailed questions on each of the claims related to the case. The jury may also be asked to decide what damages, if any, are awarded and if the infringement qualifies as willful. If the jury is unable to reach a unanimous verdict, the judge may provide additional instructions and ask them to continue deliberating. What procedures happen after trial? Following the jury's decision, the court will set a schedule for any necessary equitable proceedings and post-trial motions. Equitable proceedings deal with matters decided by the judge, not the jury, and they arise in most patent cases. They are called equitable issues because they are left to the sound, equitable discretion of the court. The most common equitable issues are the affirmative claims of willfulness and exceptional case and the defense of inequitable conduct. What is inequitable conduct defense? Inequitable conduct is misconduct by the patentee in dealing with the patent and trademark office through which the patentee or its attorney deceives or misleads the examiner. A defendant can raise this issue as a defense. If proven, this renders the patent unenforceable. Examples of inequitable conduct include fabricating alleged evidence of unexpected results in the development of the invention, hiding relevant prior art showing existing solutions to the problems solved by the patent, failing to tell the patent examiner that a related application has already been rejected. What constitutes willfulness and exceptional case in patent infringement trials? If a judge or jury finds that patent infringement has occurred, the willfulness of that infringement must also be determined. A finding of willful infringement allows the judge to award enhanced damages by up to three times the amount found. In 2016, the Supreme Court issued two closely related rulings, Halo Electronics Inc. v. Pulse Electronics Inc. and Stryker Corp. v. Zimmer Inc. That made it easier for patent owners to prove that a company's infringement was willful. Courts have discretion to award attorney's fees to defendants in a patent infringement case if it is deemed an exceptional case, meaning a case that is clearly unwarranted or is based on invalid or unenforceable patents. The Federal Circuit uses this provision as a means of deterring such lawsuits. What types of motions are filed post-trial? In terms of post-trial motions, the winning party will ask for entry of judgment while the losing party will typically file a motion for judgment as a matter of law and also a motion for a new trial. The winning party seeks entry of a judgment that grants it the relief to which it is entitled based on the jury's verdict and the rulings of the court. First, the judgment will declare who the winning party is. Then, it will clearly outline the relief to which the winning party is entitled. The relief may include damages as awarded by the jury. Damages are sometimes supplemented by the court if, when the damages are awarded, more damages have accrued since the jury calculated them. A winning patentee is also entitled to prejudgment interest on the damage award, calculated at the rate specified by law, to compensate for the time value of money lost due to the delay in obtaining damages. The judgment may also set forth the post-judgment interest due for any delay between the entry of the judgment and the payment of the award. A motion for judgment as a matter of law, or JMOL motion, argues that the jury did not legally have enough evidence to decide the case. Therefore, the court should intervene and decide the case in favor of the party moving for the JMOL. A motion for a new trial. 
JMOL motions are usually accompanied by a motion for a new trial, arguing that the jury's verdict went against the manifest weight of the evidence or the jury's verdict was grossly inadequate or excessive. Other grounds for these motions also exist, such as newly discovered evidence that could not have reasonably been discovered earlier.